<laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. So guys, I wanted a night off, so I'm like, what's a weird talk I can, that no one will show up at? And it's like the <laughs> busiest talk ever. So. so my point tonight is not to prove the earth is flat. I'm just going to throw that right there. I don't want to debate anyone and go into this stuff. But I'm going to present some pretty cool information. Is anyone here brave enough to say they're a flat earther? All right, we got one, two. I am a believer that we are in a computer simulation, but I am not a flat earther. <laughs> <laughs> so we're definitely going to have some strange people here tonight. Right? So, so my talk tonight is the earth is flat, 6,000 6, years old, and dinosaurs still exist. I started to get into it. It's a lot of material, so I'm not going to touch upon the dinosaurs I part. If you guys want more info about it, hey, pick my brain afterwards, we'll do it. But there's a whole point to this talk, okay? Number one, the most important is that we're going to have some fun tonight. Okay, I hope everyone has a really fun, light attitude towards tonight. <laughs> has anyone heard about the Flat Earth Movement before? Has anyone ever seen? Yes. Has anyone ever read the comments or things like that? Yeah. It can get pretty aggressive really quick. It's a really emotional topic. I want you guys to think about that. Why would it be such an emotional topic? <laughs> If someone's, if I believe the earth is flat, why does that incite emotion in other people? Go ahead, Malcolm. Do you think it has to do with what society has told us and if we can trust the powers that be? Right. <laughs> why would anyone want to think the earth was flat? Wait, wait who are the powers, though? Oh, <laughs> right. well, the the powers. The oh my goodness, this is going a lot of different ways. So, Judy, I think it's about this. Like, for example, I'll just tell you my story. I do these lectures every week, and I'm talking to a friend of ours, I won't mention his name. <laughs> I'm talking, and I'm like, yo, I'm like, the more I do this, the more I realize we don't know anything. How do we know truth? And he goes, we don't even know if the earth is flat. <laughs> and I'm like, as soon as everyone's I'm like, come on, man, we know the earth isn't flat. And he's like, did you ever look into it? And I'm like, no. And he's like, well, look into it. That's all he said. And that led me to like a six hour documentary. <laughs> and about like an hour in, I'm like, okay, it's some interesting points, but I think I can disprove some of this stuff. Two hours in, I'm like, whoa. My head is <laughs> <laughs> and then by three hours in, I'm like, I don't know anything. Like Holy crap. Right? And it led me on this quest for the next six months of my life. It was like every day. I would be sitting there like in the middle of the day, and I'm like, wait a minute. I just disproved the flat earth. Let me go to YouTube and look this up. And sure enough, somebody was already there doing the work, showing me that I was an idiot still. So it's like, wow. So is the earth so flat? After six months of doing this, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you my conclusion at the very end of it. Okay. But that's not the point of this talk. The point is that, hey, is Dr. Tevin totally crazy or not? That's not the point of this talk. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, it's about opening your mind. Okay. I think what's so interesting about this is when I talk to people and I approach them, and by the way, I don't talk, if I haven't talked to you about it, you know, don't be offended. There's certain people and I'm like, hey, did you ever hear about this flat earth thing? <laughs> right? And what I find is that there are people who respond either like, huh, I'll look into it, or they'll say, no way, that's stupid, or they'll say, yeah, I'm totally a flat earther, one of the three responses, right? But it's an interesting thing. To, to me, it's a point of how open is your mind? How much can you sit here and say, wow, you know? It sounds crazy, but when you really get into it, is it really that crazy? And this is going to bring us to understanding what science is versus understanding what beliefs are. Okay? So. Are you going to share with us what that documentary that you saw, what the six hours long is? Yeah, I can write down the guy's name. Okay. It's really famous. I think it's called The Best Flat Earth Documentary. Yeah, it's pretty by, much. It's by a game that guy named Eric Dubé. D U B A Y, I believe. It's a really interesting one. I'd say give it two hours. If you're not sold after two hours, then you can probably turn it off. But if you're open, it's going to lead you to the next year of your life. <laughs> <going to be laughs> over. So what is science, right? And the reason I want to do this talk is we hide behind science a lot. You know, I'm in an alternative healthcare career. And I've always known this, right? If you go against authority, what does the authority always say? Wrong. Sit down. And say, hey, the science is already out there, or this isn't, you know, the science is already spoken. Mm -hmm. But when you get into it, most people have never read the science. It's actually not science that they're talking about. So what is science? The systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural worlds through observation and experiment. So keep that in mind when we're doing this. Observation and experiment. Hey, by the way, who here has seen the Earth before? Anyone been into space? 
Why Has anyone gone into space and looked down in the air? <laughs> no. Okay. I've flown well, like at, up above the North Pole and see like a little. What did you see in the North Pole? Little in the North Pole. So yeah. she goes, okay, now we're going to show videos of this. Because when I bring this up to certain people, like for example, when I brought this up to Craig originally, he's like, oh, I flown. He, had, he had almost got his license. He's like, you can see the curve from the plane. Yeah. Right? And then you look and he's like, wait a minute, no, you can't. You look enough videos and you see weather balloons 150,000 feet high, way higher than a plane, totally flying across. And it makes him wonder, wow, maybe I just thought I saw a curve, but I really didn't see a curve. Maybe the window had a little thing going on there. <laughs> Who here likes Nikola Tesla? <laughs> Woo! Right? One of the smartest men to ever live. Here's what he said. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments. Remember, what is science? Experimenting observation. Substituted mathematics for experiments, and they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. This is our science today. We talk about the age of the earth. You're going to see something where it's like, wow, something was taken for granted 200 years ago, and today they're assuming it's still right, and all of our equations and everything come off of that. It could be totally wrong. You know what he was talking about there mostly? The theory of relativity. Who created that? Einstein. Einstein. Right? So how many, how many, you, who here has heard of the theory of relativity before? Do you guys know how important that is in all of our science today? Yeah. Guess what Tesla's saying about that? It's fancy theories, that's it. It's not reality. You can get caught up in these equations and not observe. It's not true science. It's theory. So then you start getting it down. It's like, wow, we can't account for anything. There must be something called dark matter out there. Oh yeah, dark matter exists. Then you start going with these equations. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it leads you on this whole thing because we assume the theory of relativity. And by the way, is it the law of relativity? Mm -hmm. no. no, but if you assume that's a law, what happens? So you got people right now making lots of money, spending all their time hanging out in mathematical theories, not in reality. And that's what he's saying. We want to come back to reality here. Sound good? Where does Stephen Hawking fit in all this? Stephen Hawking fits in. He's definitely not a flat earther, for sure. No. <laughs> right? So he's definitely on the mainstream, we call it the mainstream side of things, kind of like you know Neil deGrasse Tyson, people like that. Guys, where do we learn our beliefs from? On what is true? Our, our families. Our families. Where do our families learn from? Where are Their family. From? Their family. Okay, and how about where else did we learn from? School. School. Religion. Yeah, who taught our families? Who taught school? What we right? read. Who, takes, who controls the school? The government. You guys know what government means? Mm -hmm. Govern. Oh, look at that. Oh, got it. So what is the... Control relating to the mind. So, what is the purpose of a government? Do you guys know who started the schooling system in our country? Pardon? Who started this public schooling system in this country? Rockefeller. Rockefeller. Anyone know why Rockefeller started the schooling system? So, essentially, he wanted to create employees, good employees. Because before that, what did we do here? Slaves. Well, everyone had small businesses. Everyone was a small business owner. You had your family shop, things like that. Industrial Revolution comes by, you got people like Rockefeller who need employees. The whole thing was to teach obedience to authority. That's what the school systems are all based on. Okay? We never think about that, but that's what it is. Think about how a schooling system is run. It's, it's exactly a, like the prison system. Yeah, wow. Right? They look like prisons. They are exactly <laughs> like the prison system. So, just keep this in mind, okay? When did we first understand the Earth is a globe? I mean, we can't even remember. It's been taught into us. Guys, that's called And I'm not saying it's wrong. Hey, I'm not here saying, hey, this is wrong. But I want you to understand that we are brainwashed. And we're going to see that tonight. Hopefully. Okay? So, who here, raise your hand if you know for a fact that the Earth is round. For a fact. No one's brave enough. Tell people. I haven't seen it. No. Oh, well, there we go. Okay. How do we know the Earth is round? So what I want to know is, guys, tell me how the Earth is round. You see it. Well, you look at the stars. And, and you see the earth. So I want to know, NASA besides NASA. someone telling us the earth is round, how do we know the earth is round? We've seen pictures of it. NASA. Pictures. We've seen pictures from the astronauts that were taken NASA. showing the earth is round. You got it. Like, like, let's say you're in trouble. 
like a do a round trip around the around, around the world. So traveling. We'll get to this, all this stuff. Yeah, if you if it's flat, then what happens at the end? Do we fall <laughs> off, right? <laughs> <laughs> or you know, a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, or do you fall on the other side? Yes. Did you guys ever yeah. see there's a meme? I, I used to always think that. There's a meme on Facebook. It's like if the earth is flat, the cat would push everything off of it by now. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Also, also <laughs> gravity. Gravity. Interesting. Now, I'm not going to talk about gravity, but guess who did not believe in gravity? Tesla. Tesla. Nikola Tesla didn't believe in gravity. Hey. So how do you not believe in gravity, right? How do things fall, right? You can describe it through density. So is this more or less dense than air? More dense. If I let go of it, what happens to it? Falls. Now a beach ball, if I take a beach balloon and I put it, you know, like a beach ball, and I put it underwater and I let go, what happens to it? Pops up. Is it an anti-gravitational device? <laughs> How does that happen? <laughs> Just weird things to consider. So you can make a point that the idea of gravity is only created so it makes sense to why water sticks to a ball. If you don't have that and you have a plain surface, do you need to ex you need gravity to explain all this stuff? By ball, you mean the Well, that's why we don't float up into the air. Is it? Or maybe it's electromagnetism. Oh, <laughs> okay. No, I'm being serious, guys. Why would it not be? I don't know. <laughs> Why isn't it density? These are the things. These are just questions. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just questioning. Wow. Sean, do you have a comment? Yeah, on gravity. Why does a bird, a baby bird, fall to the ground if it's if it can fly eventually? If it's still the same body and it falls. Well, then you have laws of density, fly. right? What's happening when he's flying the wind? You have laws of aerodynamics, and that still exists. Mm -hmm. So what he's doing is making himself less dense than air and floating above it. Correct. Yeah, I should take that one. <laughs> I don't want to debate anyway. I'm not an expert in this, okay? By the way, how long have we known the Earth is around for? How long has it been, like, basic public knowledge? Like, well, 16 years. Galileo? Is it Galileo? Early Greek from I don't know. 2,000 years or more. Somebody was jailed for saying the Earth was around. Mm -hmm. yeah. The church believed it was flat. Yeah, it's only the past couple hundred church. years. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually only been the past one, since the 1900s. And what do you think made it so big? Once you can start seeing pictures of it, and you have these government agencies telling, oh yeah, definitely. Go ahead, right? Watch out. Some pictures in the Bible and stuff like that. They, they mention it for the group. So in the Bible, what it mentions, is, and there's passages, and there's plenty of videos. I don't put it on this presentation. This is just a glimpse, guys. We can have like a, I can do a six-hour presentation. <laughs> so I just want you to know, my point today is not to convince you that Earth is flat. In fact, I'm going to go very little into that, the theory behind it. But I want you to realize, now this is another one. What's another proof, by the way, that the Earth is round? The moon. Like the moon's round. So okay, so pla planets are round? How about that? Now, stars, well, the stars, rainbows. Rainbow. Let me ask you. Rainbows. What about rainbows? <laughs> How about <laughs> day and <laughs> How about day and night? Isn't it the shape of the earth? So I'll, I'll get the sun We can talk about that. I wouldn't yeah. say that's a proof that it's uh, round though. Okay. Now, how about ships going over the horizon? I'm surprised no one said that. Kevin. Mm -hmm. Well, well, would that fall under? Do we fall off? <laughs> <laughs> well, ships go. I'm saying it's a globe. Whatever. Right? Who here has right, seen the ship myself. go out over the horizon? Yeah, you know, right. Right? Yeah. right. That's the common one we hear a lot of. Yeah. Okay. Now let me ask you this: Is this a good argument? Planets around, so we must be around. If, if I'm an ant on this floor looking up and I see the ceiling lights that are round, do I assume that I'm on something round as well? No. no. Right? But we do that a lot. Is that science? No, I mean, in a way it is, but it's a false premise, correct? So we're going to throw that one out. Okay, Gravity, I'm going to throw out for now. We can talk a lot about this one. Okay, What else do we fall off? We'll talk about travel. We can talk about NASA pictures. Ships on the horizon. Are we good about this? Yeah. Hey, guys, how old is the Earth? <laughs> how old is the Earth? <laughs> Billions of years. Four. According to our textbooks, 4.5 billion years. Now let me ask you this, how do you know if the Earth is 4.5 billion years old? Trust. From science. Trust. From science. I don't know. So, we'll get into this. Let's get into the science of this. By the way, I'm going to put this in quotes. Okay. What else? Anyone know? How else do we do this? Carbon dating. Carbon dating. Let's go to carbon dating. How about fossils? 
Yeah. Well, yeah. How about the geo? What's it called? Geo. Link. Geo. I don't know. Lithic? Lithic? There's something lithic. Geothermal? Call it rock layer. <laughs> <laughs> layers of the rock, strata. there's strata in the rock, yeah, right? Yeah, strata, right? Yeah, that's right. These are how we use and how old this is. Hey, we're getting to that too and the science behind it too. Sound good? Let's start with the flat earth. Our good old flat earth here, okay? How do we know how old it is? How long have we believed in the globe? We talked about that. Pictures. Who here has seen a picture of Earth, a real picture of Earth? Oh, okay. Yeah. So like, oh, no, no. A real picture? A real picture of Earth. Who here has seen a real picture of Earth? Nobody wants to raise their hands. So, this is what starts to blow your mind a little bit. If you type in this and Google this, if you have a computer, Google this right now. Type in real pictures of Earth and see what comes up. Okay, what you get are a bunch of CGI stuff. Now, understand this. What's this? Yeah, that's a galaxy. Way. That's the Milky Way galaxy, right? Look how beautiful that thing is, right? Who took the pictures? NASA. 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 Guys, I want you to understand. We are in the Milky Way galaxy. We are here somewhere. Do you think we had a satellite come all the way out of the galaxy, turn around and look and take a picture of the galaxy, and then send it back to us? I don't think so. Why not? So that's not real. Because, guys, you know how long one star away is from us? So can you imagine traveling outside of the galaxy, turning it around and taking a picture? You're talking billions of light years away and then sending it. You can't do it. Right. So this, what is that then? This is all about Guys, this is what NASA does. This is called the CGI. This is a picture. This is a drawn CGI. picture. CGI. Computer uh, generated image. Wow. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Voyager 1, I think it was called, was like launched in 1960 as a satellite. Guys. Hold on. And it <laughs> just reached out of like the solar system. Yeah, it, it would be something like that. I mean, solar talking, system's in it. And yeah. again, you're talking about light years, and you're talking about theories, right? We're talking about equations, not observations, right now. Right. Right. Understand that. I saw this beautiful article one time, and it was like about like, and it had this beautiful picture of like, oh, we have this new picture of these new planets found light years away. And then I look at it, and I open the picture up. This is after I'm a flat Earth here, looking at it, right? And it says. Oh, by the way, these pictures, these are sheet CGI. These aren't the real images. Here are the real images. And it's like two little specks. You can't see anything. Yeah. The first thing that came up here was, why is there no real picture of Earth from space that shows its entire shape if we really went to the moon? Whoa. <laughs> That's what I got when I Googled it. What's this? CGI. This is CGI. This is not a real picture of Jupiter yet. This is a CGI picture. Hey, what's this? CGI. It's fake. It's pretty beautiful, bro. It's completely yeah. fake. In fact, I'm going to prove that to you because I have a video here of the guy from NASA talking about how they make their images. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guys, how can that be fake, right? Uh, Guess what? That's from the movie Gravity. That's, That's not even <laughs> <laughs> right? So I want you to understand this concept, guys. This is a movie. This is millions of dollars. Anyone know how much NASA makes a year? Billions. $20 billion a year. Do you think it's hard for them to come up with, oh, look, we found a planet today. <laughs> Just saying. Like, this is not unbelievable, right? By the way, these are the official things that we come out, the official pictures of Earth all through the years from NASA. I want you to understand something, right? First of all, different colored oceans and all of them. Look at North America in this picture. Look at it in this picture. You guys see a huge difference in there. Right? Global warming. <laughs> <laughs> Sun is getting huge right now. What's up with those clouds in 2007? It's because we're obese. From the north. <laughs> no, no. If you can come closer, you guys can see this. This is like taking up, literally, North America is taking up half the hemisphere. Oh, yeah. Here, yeah, here it's a little speck. Oh, guys, I want you to understand. Look at this picture right here. Oh, my God. Whoa. Oh, God. It's from the north. Well, even if you want to argue it, Rita, that's cool. Let's watch the guy who creates these things okay. talk about it. Okay. This is how our pictures are made. Then in 2002, Blue Marble 2.0, NASA's Rob Simmons made this. Simmons' job is... It's primarily taking data and making pictures out of it? That's what this is. A composite of data sets from several different instruments translated into a picture. So we actually had to take clouds out. They stashed the clouds for later, went on to the ocean. That came from an instrument that measures phytoplankton in the sea. 
where it was low, I colored it dark blue because they're low mostly in mid-ocean. And then where it was a little bit higher, it was like a little bit brighter green. Then add the clouds back in. <laughs> in between each orbit. So some of those are painted on. It is Photoshop, but it's it has to be. Then? There was another layer to sort of simulate the atmosphere. And then there's this little bright spot. It's called the specular highlight. So it's the reflection of sunlight off of water. Those are the pieces, but you can't just slap them all together. It just didn't look realistic. It looks kind of flat, or the clouds are sort of too see-through. So I just think it ends the a lot. There's artistry to creating the world. <laughs> so guys, just let you know, this picture, what they're talking about, is the official NASA image of 2002. That's called Blue Marble. It's an iconic image that was told to us, oh, this is Earth. What they're saying is they just take pictures, they hover above, they take all these pictures and composites, and they put them together, and they put it in, this is what it looks like. Now, am I saying Earth is definitely not a globe because of this? No. But I'm just saying, hey, you've never seen a real picture of Earth. Okay? Next phase. Now, you might have seen the International Space Station, right? Look at that. Pretty nice, right? Look at the curve on it. It's beautiful, right? Look at the same exact altitude. Where's the curve? What's that? In comparison to the other picture. So? What's that? Curve? Yeah. I want you to look at the curve of that. And look at that. Right? It's the same. It's a curved lens. And by the way, look at the proportions of this. And you can do this with better images. You guys see how this land all the way across? Guys, if this was the real two ratio, this is the Earth's curve, mm -hmm. what continent would that be? It takes up literally everything that you see there. It's not to ratio. You, they have pictures of this with the Great Salt Lake, and the Great Salt Lake is like huge, which is not that big. This is a fish-eyed lens, for sure. Okay? In fact, there's a whole video you can just watch. This is just a glimmer of it. You guys had fun yet? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hope no one has like a nervous breakdown yeah. after this stuff. <laughs> well, by the way, I want to pause it right. I want to back up. That is so funny. Oh, no, oh, I missed it. I'll do it later. But... <laughs> Guys, look at this. Flat. Oh, there's the curve. It's just a fisheye lens. It's the lenses that are used on Whoa. these things. Okay. Look at that. So, that hey, maybe really that's real. Maybe the, maybe the International Space Station is true. But is it definitive proof if we look at that picture? Does that picture prove the Earth is curved? No, Because no. you'll see that. You'll see the International Space Station playing video, and then all people commenting, like, oh, look at all these flat earthers, look at the curve, man. It's not the curve. It's not, it's too small, it's too close in to be the curve of the Earth. Exactly. That Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're not that far away from the Earth, is the fact. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, one, one thing about proving is that, is that there are also the time differences. Mm -hmm. That then you have, like, morning here and even in the other place. And how do you explain that? Other, if it would be flat, or the sun shines in all the places that the You're going to have to wait, Rita. we got to explain the time. <laughs> I'm going to travel. I can promise you, though, isn't that crazy <laughs> against Rita? It's the radical. <laughs> you start going down it, there's answers to all of it. Yeah, you yeah. have to wait, Rita. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, who here has seen a ship disappear over the horizon? It's called the law of perspective. If you're standing on a street somewhere and you see the street lights going down, are they, so for example in this picture, and I'll show you another one, are these going over the horizon or are they just getting smaller because you, your eyes have a limit to how far they can see. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Our eyeballs are. Oh, that is. So, are they really round? Yeah, right? No, I don't see Could that do something? I don't know. That was a real question. So for example, in this picture, right, are these going over the horizon, these telephone poles? <laughs> Maybe, who knows, right? So, here's a really easy way to do this, and you can do this, and this video is going to show this. It's going to do it with a buoy, but you can do it with a boat, you can do it with anything. Really simple thing. If I'm standing there, and I see a boat go over the horizon, but I'm saying it's the law of perspective, how do I prove that it's the law of perspective and not going over the horizon? What if I zoom in on it? You'll still see it. If it goes over the horizon, will I still see it? No. no, really easy, simple experiment. And guess what? There's loads of videos on YouTube of people doing this, and guess what they see still? If you follow it, it'll never go over the horizon. Right. <laughs> You'll be so, for right example, over. this is a buoy. Yeah. It's in, right? It's like it's been placed there. <laughs> <laughs> so look how far away that is, right? Did that thing go over the horizon? 
No. Right now, with it. our human eyes, we wouldn't see it. We're right? not following it. What happened? Not that far away. It's not that far away. It fell off. So guys, I want you to look. As more as you zoom in, by, uh, guys, I challenge you to go online. There's so many videos of this stuff. Movie. Okay, you can do this with both. You'll sit there and you'll watch a boat go over the horizon. Then they'll just zoom in, and you'll see it in full view again. And then do it again, and then do it again. In fact, and by the way, just for a visual, this is what we're talking about. Six miles. If you take here, and there's people who've done this experiment. There's people. What they do is they do it with mountain ranges. They'll take a mountain, and they'll take another mountain that's supposed to be off the curve, and they'll do this telescope thing. And guess what they can see? The full building, full, yep. full mountain. Hundred percent. How does that happen? Now, science won't argue it. Guess what they'll say? Wait, what are they doing? I'm so, Bianca, if you're standing here and you're looking straight out at another flag, let's say in this example, here, D, but it's six miles apart. Well, by that time, the curve is dropping, I don't know how many feet per, oh, per right. mile. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. It would drop too much that if you look straight out, where's your view going to be? Yeah, they do it for even longer. It's yeah. crazy when you get into it. So, Roy, go online. And yeah. what I'm saying is I don't want to have like all the specific talks here. There's yeah. so many proofs on that. So he starts it at yeah, that flag right there. Flag walks, A. Walks, yeah, he just then walks he's, over. He's and he's keeping the same sight. No, he stays right here. Oh, he stays right here. So what's the bottom one now? But he's looking through what? If there's a curve of the Earth, you're not going to see that flag D. Right. Even if you ah. zoom in. Even if you right. zoom in, and you're looking through a telescope, where's your vision? You're going straight, but the Earth is curving down. Mm -hmm. Your vision isn't curving down. That is wild. Right? It's a really easy experiment. Go ahead. So under that theory, you could sit at the beach, get a telescope, and see Bahamas. If it's powered enough, absolutely, yes. You can well, see what? Well, if you see stars, on the moon, you ought to be able to see the Bahamas. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly it. It's just how far a range can you do? Absolutely. <coughs> What's the one on the bottom? I yeah, don't uh, it's uh, just saying if the Earth is flat or there's not a curve. Oh, you would see everything. You would see it. Okay. And you can do this with mountains too. But, and again, science won't argue this. The argument is, oh, it creates a mirage <laughs> because there's water, and they start going into equations. And this is what I'm saying. You can get into this world where you look up a video and then you look up counterproofs, and the counterproofs are like crazy equations, saying, oh, well, then this, you got to take into account the viscosity of this and the, the water vapor and all this other stuff. <laughs> and then what does Tesla say? Are we trusting our instincts and our sights, or are we trusting mathematics and laws and theories? Right. You know, and it's like, okay, let's replicate these things. That's what experiment and observation is. This is an experiment. This is an observation. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Crazy, right? NASA. So of course we have a government agency. How can NASA lie to us? <laughs> Has NASA ever lied before? Who knows? Yes. Peter says yes. NASA has lied to us. Yes. Big time. So this is a really iconic image. This is an image um, of one of the Apollo missions. It's actually Earth from the moon. Now, there's so many things wrong with this picture alone, we won't even get into it. <laughs> However, guess what we have today? We have Photoshop, and they had this, they didn't have Photoshop. So guess what we can do? We can go in here, we can play around, and we can see, oh, is anything tainted with? And guess what happened? This picture has been proven, and guess what happened? That's a composite. That's not real. That's a man-made picture. Oh. Okay? This is one proof that NASA lied to us. You guys ever see like a really old movie? At the time you saw the movie and it was like awesome, iconic, like the special effects were amazing. And then you watch it like 30 years later, you're like, but yeah. Suffering. Hey, this is, the moon. this is the one of the first moon landings. This is the, the lunar module leaving the moon going back home. I want you guys to see how beautiful this is and how amazing this is. That's the trick. Back to Earth now? Who's staying yes. on the moon? Yeah, who's staying on the moon? <laughs> hey, so, exactly. Two things with this. Number one, let's watch this again. Special effects, wow. Rainbow sparkly sparkles in the air. Where are the stars? Back so, back to Earth now? Who's staying on the moon? Yeah, who's staying on the moon? 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 Who's staying so unless they're really good at timing and they're just like, well, we'll track it up, we'll just guess eight seconds earlier when it's going to go up. There's something really fishy and wrong. I mean, who here with their basic senses can say, wow, that doesn't look real? Anyone? 
Well, the contraption that they're flying in is made out of nothing. That's coming home, though. That's coming to Earth. Yeah. <laughs> With the amount of force that space has, that they're, they're, they can't make it. There's a ton of these videos on that. You know, I only have so much space in my computer to download all these videos. Plus, I was concerned the government was going to track me. So <laughs> there's all these astronauts. And by the way, I don't know if you guys have known this. I don't want to go too much into this. Every single person who's ever been into space has been a Freemason. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get into it too much, but it's just like, okay, it hasn't been many people, but you guys see what it's showing here? So you'll see these videos of people floating around a lot of times and doing interviews, and like, oh, we're in space, right? There are so many videos that you can go on and look at this and see miss-ups where they have literally what you can see the wires pulling on this guy's shirt, and you can watch the video of this too, and you can see the harnesses literally on people, and they're spinning them around, and they get caught. Do you, you watch know? the one where um, they wheel Bush in? Like no. In a, oh, that no. was awesome. Right? So, the, I mean, it's just been, there's so, because of the internet today, guys, there's so many times it's, you see this stuff over and over. Again, my whole point is that NASA is wrong. NASA, my whole point is, does NASA lie to us? Yes. Who here would say yes at this? So most of the time, though. All governments yes. lie. Are you kidding? Yeah. Yes. Why do we let it? Wow. Yeah, oh, I'm not going to talk about that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess. really yeah. quickly, really quickly, that's the advanced talk. People didn't walk out of here last year. <laughs> so, okay, the flat Earth model. So, I don't want to go too deep into this because it's a six hour documentary. I mean, you guys can go into it. So, Rita, the questions you're asking about how the sun and the moon work, for example. I'm going to tell you. It makes way more sense on a flat Earth model than it does on a globe model. Because there's a lot of problems wrong with our, with our Sun Earth model. Just one example, how does a lunar eclipse happen on, with our model? We have Earth here. We have Earth here. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, I didn't come out either. It's all the It's all the It's all the Earth here. You have the sun 93 million miles away over here. So lunar eclipse, what side of the Earth is seeing this? This side or this side? That's the left Earth. side. Left side? This would be a solar eclipse. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the moon is over here, this is what's causing. The sun's casting a shadow over this, and it appears like a... Eclipse to everybody on this side looking here. Does that make sense? Right. Mm -hmm. You can never have a lunar eclipse during the daytime. How would that happen? Because the, the moon would have to be somewhere down here during daytime. So these people could see this is daytime over here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yet yeah. there are videos of a lunar eclipse happening during daytime. Mm -hmm. Google lunar eclipse during the daytime. No, Google will say to you, it cannot happen. And then Google video of lunar eclipse in the daytime and guess what you'll find? Videos are like lost. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff wrong with our current model that we don't talk about. A lot of stuff. Flat Earth model. Sumerians, Babylonians, they believed in a flat Earth model. Every ancient culture believed in it. Egyptian, Norse, Hindu, Mayan, Incan, Navajo, Hebrew. So even someone asked about the Bible, for example. It talks about the firmament, which is a glass structure above it. It talks about it being fixated, God putting the two lights in the sky. And by the way, in our is there one light or two lights? We have two lights. The moon. Well, there's only one. What's the moonlight coming from? The sun. The sun. The sun. The sun. Although the moon has complete, moonlight has completely different properties than sunlight does. Yeah, we're talking about it. In fact, moonlight is cooler than sunlight. If, if you take sunlight and you're hanging out in the sun versus the shade, what's warmer, the sunlight or the shade? Shade. The sunlight. How about moon? Oh. Moonlight is colder than shade. <laughs> Weird, right? We have nightshade vegetables. For some reason, they do really well with the moonlight as opposed to the sunlight. Well, that's why they're called nightshades. So I want you guys to see this. This is the really fun part because I was not into this at all because I'm like, come on, we're gonna fly off the edge, all this stuff, right? When you get into it, there's a model for all of this stuff and how it works. Okay, I should, but they all look like this essentially a flat plane disc with a actually a glass dome, what they call the firmament above it, which the stars are fixated on, which spins around, and the two, the moon and the sun, in the middle of it. So it kind of looks like this. Okay, this is looking from above down on it. 
So if you take our globe and you take the bottom of it and open it up flat, it's called a Gleason map. There's a map for this. It's actually the most accurate map that there is. Right. So what's this in the middle? The North Pole. Yeah. This would be the North Pole. Where's Antarctica? All around. Okay. okay. So what's going on past this? Nobody knows. By the way, who here has been to Antarctica? Nobody goes to Antarctica. I was thinking about it recently. Like, yeah, so not you're not really allowed to. Only government, only certain governments, all the governments around the world. In fact, this come, this organization. Anyone know what? Oh it's my God! It's right in front of us. Yeah. Oh my God! That's the United Nations symbol. The United Nations has a pact, right? No one owns Antarctica. Everybody owns it, but you can't go there. Me and you, we can't just take a trip to Antarctica. Yeah. Right? There's only been a couple people who have actually been gone. There's one guy named Admiral Bird. Anyone heard of Dr. Admiral Bird? He's a general. Yeah. He had a place called um, Mission called uh, Operation High Jump, where he went there. And we'll talk about why they probably called it Operation High Jump. I don't want to get too far into, into this experience. Whoa, <laughs> what if that's supporting so, center? Again, from the side view, this is what it looks Ooh. like. What's the, what's the cone above it? This is called the firmament. It's in every single religion, essentially, talking about this fixated glass. And the, the, glass? It's, a, it's glass. a glass type thing. Terrarium. It's super interesting when you get into it, because it, it goes deep, it's crazy. I'm telling you, you're going to get on a fun little... Just have fun with it. But essentially, there's these two lights above it. They hover above and they spin around. So for example, whoa, what would I do? So if I'm the sun tracks a circle, and then throughout the year it gets wider and wider. So when it's going over us here in a tight circle, we call that summer. Like here's North America. Then it goes wider. And as it goes up here, guess what we're in now? Winter. During winter, and then it comes back in. And by the way, the moon is doing the same thing, except in a different cycle. What's really trippy about it is if you put a, a, a pole in the ground and you track the shadow of the sun throughout an entire year, it makes the shape of a yin yang all the way down. So you, you have, have a what? Sun and the moon. A yin yang. It's really trippy. Whoa. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's really cool. They, they got really, I mean, there's people who built models like this. People get really into it. Remember we talked about gravity versus no gravity? There's people who built models based on electromagnetism. So they actually have made lights that hover above based on this letting off an electromagnetic energy, and this is hovering above it through magnetism and, and actually going in a circle. It's how pretty deep, interesting. How deep is this flat earth? Again, yeah, there's people, there's all different yeah. theories and things. Well, all where do the volcanoes come from? Where are they digging down to? Oh, no, Judy, go on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> This is my quest. You know what I'm doing? When it's they, what I did. I was sitting there like, what about volcanoes? And I would Google. There'd be like a thousand videos on flat earth. Uh -huh. And it's like, whoa. And when they go miles and miles stuff. down into the ocean and find all these different species, how deep is this flat earth? Crazy when you get into it. <laughs> Dude, there's so many, there's so many, if more questions come up the deeper you go down. Is anybody going to sleep tonight now? <laughs> how many people are going to mess with you, brother? Yo, watch that documentary. Oh my God. Guys, yeah, you want to do something that really trips you up? Go into what are the stars and oh, focusing stars. in on stars and what they really are and what they look like. Are they really billions of light years away? No. Yeah. no. It's super because they can't, they can't gauge how far they are. They don't so, have technology for it. By the way, this is Antarctica. I don't know if you guys know this. Why don't we fall off? So remember, we're going to talk about Antarctica here. This is yeah. outer edge. This is what it looks like all the way around. It's called the giant ice shelf. Operation high jump. And by the way, like a, a big huge ship is only like right there. This thing is massive. It goes all the way around Antarctica. The most modern um, explorer was um, Cook. And he, there is a story of him, and it's actually in his logs. He went to, he actually sailed south to Antarctica and wanted to find passage. He ended up going all the way around Antarctica. So think about in the globe, what it would look like, right? All the, around, all the way around Antarctica to try to find a place to go up on Antarctica and explore. 60,000 nautical miles, which is way bigger than Antarctica. It's more like this. And, and through his 60,000 miles, never found one place to enter, meaning all the way around. It was like this. Who was that? That was Cook in the 1800s. Right. What's his name? I don't know his first name. I know Cook's explorer. Cook, Cook's first name. Jimmy Cook. 
So I guess the Earth isn't warming enough to melt that, huh? Right? <laughs> or is it space that's keeping it too cold? <laughs> so, guys, a couple of things just to consider. And just a couple of fun things, just little tidbits here. I want you to think about this. In, our, in what we are taught in school today is that we are traveling at 1,000 miles an hour. Right? We're, we're rotating pretty quick. Okay? Allegedly. And we're going around a sun. That, and that sun, is that sun stationary? No. no. So we're rotating and we're revolving around the sun. And what's that sun doing? Same thing. Revolving around what? Center of our solar, or center of our galaxy. And then what's our galaxy doing? Staying still? Staying around the center of the universe it's going around. So are we staying stationary right now? No. This is our stars every night for the past few thousand years. If you track the stars and the movement of the stars, this is what you get. What's that center point? Anyone know what that center point is? North star. That's the North Star. So let's go back to here. That would be right here. And you have all these stars. Imagine this being like a big snow globe that all the stars are swirling around. What kind of picture would you get? Something very similar to that. Does that make sense? Doesn't change. Now I'm like, it's going to make you a little nauseous too, right? Is that definitive proof? No, of course. There's answers in the globe world for this. They'll say, well, there's a billion miles away, and it's all relative. You get into theories. And it's cool. I'm getting into observation mode. I'm just looking. Like, okay. Am I saying that the Earth's flat? No. I'm just saying, wow. Who here has a little bit more doubt now? Like, wow. A couple other things to consider. Hey, this is what we're taught. By the way, the sun is so far away, right? 93 million miles away. How do the rays come out of the sun? Like this? Or parallel? Anyone know how we're taught in school? You guys see the difference? We're, this is actually the way it's described. The sunlight is always parallel. That's what we're taught. Does that look parallel to you guys? No. Yeah. Now let me ask you this. Does that look 93 million miles away? Yeah. No. Right? What's that equation you can do where you take a triangle right. and follow it to the apex? I am so Right? Now again, is there an answer to that in the globe world? I'm sure. It has to do with refraction of the atmosphere and all this stuff. You know, who knows what? But it's only happening there. It's there are pictures happening. of literally a sunspot yeah. right over there. That's the cloud is deflecting the light. Yeah. Where's the rest yeah. of the yeah. cloud? Right. You know, this is what you start getting into of like, wow, let me just, so these are questions that I never considered right before. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Guys, we're only yeah. halfway through this presentation, too. Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot more coming. Oh, Red Bull State Space? You guys remember the Red Bull thing? Yeah. yeah. No. So, Red Bull paints the sky to go up past our atmosphere. 23 miles in the air. It took him two and a half hours to get to this point. This is him, and he parachutes from there. Now, I want you to think about this, though. Two and a half hours to get up there. He goes up past our atmosphere. By the way, how fast is our Earth spinning? Pretty fast, 1,000 miles an hour. Okay, he lands 55 miles away. Shouldn't he land in a really completely different place? Yeah. Earth is spinning. Now again, is there an answer for it? Sure. There's always answers to it. But this is my point. There's always an answer, there's always a counter answer, there's always a counter answer to that. Who knows? But it looks a little round there. Exactly. So in my video I played earlier, there was a clip of this. Mm -hmm. This is at the same distance, remember that flat horizon? Mm -hmm. Why does it look like this? Because of the lens. Fish eye lens. Fish eye lens. Oh, look at how big this lens is. This is not for each other. This is a fish eye lens. Right. 100%. How about this? Now, we have a vacuum in space. Would anyone argue that? Well, who would argue if there's anything in space? <laughs> <laughs> a vacuum. Is there a vacuum in space? So we're talking there's a vacuum. What does a vacuum mean? There's nothing there. Well, what does a vacuum do? <coughs> How does our atmosphere, this light blue thing, stay to the Earth? The dome. <laughs> so my point is this, guys. There's no answer for this in science. Our atmosphere should not stick to this. There's a vacuum outside. The vacuum would suck up all of our air, all of our oxygen, and disperse it. How does that happen? Nobody knows. Gravity. 
Gravity. <laughs> gravity only goes so far. Right? <laughs> Do they have an explanation? Like it's so no. like there's yes. a <laughs> weird atmosphere. I've never found one. I'm sure somebody has one somewhere. But let me ask you this. Who here can say the earth is definitely low? <laughs> How do we say it's definitely a globe? Can't say it because nobody can take a picture of a globe. Unless you've seen it with your own eyes, I don't believe you. I don't believe it's flat, maybe. I don't know if it's a globe. But what I'm saying is this. Guys, how mu who here has been brainwashed into thinking it's definitely a globe and never thought about it? Who here has been, when someone said, all oh, the earth is flat, you said, oh, they're stupid. <laughs> it's never been one of my priorities to care. Well, let me ask you. Actually, let me ask you. I don't care. Going into this more and more, is it a sound theory? No. Pretty potentially, right? Shows us how brainwashed we can actually be without even knowing it. Okay, you guys doing okay on time so far? We can end it right now if you guys want. No, no, continue. 6,000 year old Earth. How long have we believed the Earth is 4.5 billion? <laughs> Since they started being able to do all the carbon dating and excavating and however long that is. So a little before that, carbon dating came out in 1949, okay? We've been told this since the late 1700s. Before that, we thought the Earth was 6,000 years old. So around the 1700s, a gentleman came out and started doing rock layers and looking at rock layers. And we're going to get into really where the numbers come from. It's kind of backwards. But essentially, realize this number is only about 150, 200 years old. That's it. Relatively, really, really short period of time. We have believed the Earth is 6,000 years old, way longer than 4.5 billion years. We have science now to back up all this other stuff, right? It's the science stuff. This is what we're taught now. There was something called the Big Bang Theory that happened about 15 billion years ago. What's the Big Bang Theory? Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, <laughs> you got to answer? <laughs> Essentially, there was nothing that exploded into everything 15 billion years ago. We had a singularity, which is like the center of a black hole that contained everything in it that exploded. After that, the Earth was formed from it and cooled it off about 4.5 billion years ago. From there, you have this stuff called primordial soup that formed and life came out of it. Meaning there is this goo that had amino acids that randomly got together and then zapped with lightning and boom, that's where life started. Human life evolved from it 3 million years ago. So humans have been on this planet about 3 million years. This is what we're taught. Which of these are scientific facts? Remember, what's science? Science is true. Observation and experiment. So let's go through the list. Number one, the first thing we have to ask, can science answer this? How did nothing get the energy to explode into everything? Where did it come from? Can that question be answered? Go ahead, Sean. So wait, what came from nothing? Where did nothing get well, something from? Saying that that right oh, disproves it. Right? So here, here's the answer to this, guys. Science doesn't know. They'll tell you. We don't know. We don't know that yet. So is that observable? Can the Big Bang happen? No. Why do we have planets spinning? I put planets in quotes, because who knows if we even have those, right? Why do we have planets that spin in reverse directions. Meaning the Big Bang Theory states that everything is a singularity that exploded outward like this. That means everything in the universe should be what? Oh. Going, spinning the same way. And that's not what we find according to scientists. We have stuff going in reverse direction. How does that happen? Can't be explained. Why do we have meteorites and things going out in different directions? If everything started in the center and went outward, how do we get meteorites and things like that going in different directions and zooming in and out of the stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything would be in the same path. So they say, we don't know. How did the elements come into existence from just hydrogen? So everything started in just one element. How did that one element evolve into all the different elements on this existence? Can you observe that? Has it ever been done in a laboratory where they've taken hydrogen and created all the elements from it and watched it evolve naturally? 
Never happened. How did the planets and stars form a, from a singularity? How did life come to be? Have we ever observed through an experiment primordial soup, random amino acids just hanging out there, just one day randomly turning into life? Have we ever observed it? It's never happened. So is that science or is that a theory? It's a story. It's a belief. It's not science. You guys see what I'm saying so far? And then finally, last question. Guys, I want you to know my background. I almost went into evolutionary study, because I'm like into this stuff. I, I, I love this stuff, I love genetics, it was super fun. And then this guy blew my mind listening to him, because it was like, whoa. <laughs> the only thing that's ever been proven is something called microevolution. Microevolution is really just adaptation. It means like, if you take E. coli in a Petri dish, and you watch them keep reproducing, they'll form different types of E. coli. Has an E. coli ever just kept reproducing, reproducing, and then produced a whole different species? No. No. But that's what evolution is based on. It's the theory of evolution. Right? Have we ever seen one animal turn into another animal over time? <laughs> Ta but it's okay. Ta <laughs> well, and that, but in the theory of evolution talks about a common ancestor. So you have a common ancestor. Let's say you have this ancestor that lives in the jungle. And then one day they, something happens and one goes out to the plains, a group, and one stays in the jungle. These would keep evolving and adapting into what we would see a monkey today. And these would ex completely have different adaptations and turn into humans, right? But I want you to understand that's a story. That's not science. And the reason I'm saying that is we are taught that that is absolute science. Have we ever observed it? Yeah. What about Galapagos? What about them? Galapagos Islands. Yeah, so Darwin's finches. He just observed that the finches had different sized beaks. Were they finches still? Yes. Yeah. All different kinds of things. But it's always the there. same species because what's the answer? How right, long does evolution species. take? The defense is this. Well, it takes millions of millions of years to turn from one animal into another animal. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you need millions and millions. So they say, oh, it's the truth, but we need millions of years. You can't see it happen. How, how could they observe that? If my point is that. Right, yeah. And I'm not saying this is wrong. I hope you guys hear me when I'm saying this. Am I saying that this is wrong? But I'm saying that, guess what? When someone is a creationist, for example, and believes that God created everything, that is a belief. When someone says, I believe in evolution, that is not science backing that up. Does that make sense to people? But what are we taught in school? Well, this is a scientific fact. This should be taught. This is truth. Versus this, this is just gobbling a good belief system. So they're actually both the same. They're both belief systems. Two be belief Everything's a belief system. Mm -hmm. Absolutely everything is. Yeah. There's no science to back any of this up, guys. It's all what the authority has told us is science. It's called scientism. Right? And I was, I'm deep into it. I love this stuff. Man. That was almost, <laughs> almost my career path. So how do we know the age of the Earth? Relative aging through rock layers. So look at this. This is the Grand Canyon. Look at all those different layers. Those are called strata. Right? And this is what we're taught. This was in the 1700s they started doing this. That over time a layer of sediment is deposited into like a lake, for example, and it lies flat. And then at a later time a different layer is deposited above that, and then a different layer, and then a different layer. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you get these layers. So what's the oldest rock here? <coughs> the bottom one. The more down it is. And by the way, how long does it take to make these layers? Millions upon millions of years to form these layers. Okay? So, and then what they do is they have these things called index fossils. So, you'll have an age of rock, and you'll find fossils there, and then you have another bunch of fossils here, and this kind of rock, and another. Now, let me ask you, how do they date the age of rock? Carbon dating? No. So, this is the 1700s, 1800s. What they used were index fossils. They said, wow, we knew these animals existed in the Jurassic phase, these fossils, therefore, the Jurassic phase was this number of millions of years ago. Right? That's my point. These numbers, guys, <laughs> they made it all up. are all theory. They're not true. This is some guy's theory. So let me ask you this, and you can do this, how they tell the age of a rock is by the fossils they find in it. Guess how they tell the age of the fossils? 
By the age of the rock. By the age of the rock. <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> this it's happened in the 1700s, <laughs> and by the 1800s, it was widely accepted. Isn't that called circular thinking? Geologic column. You got it. Man. And guess what's crazy about this? This is what carbon dating is based on. This happened in the late 1700s, early 1800s. These numbers, there's no science to back any of this stuff up except for carbon dating. So how does carbon dating work? You guys understand what I'm saying, right? They literally just, it's a circular argument. By the way, look at the strata here. You guys don't know what this is? No. That's a tree. Standing vertically through it. Oh. This is definitive, well, no, I shouldn't say definitive. This is a pretty big blunder to this whole geologic yeah. scene. Oh. Because how many millions of years have passed through this? And the trees. Millions upon millions upon millions upon millions upon millions, upon millions, upon millions according to this theory. Okay? Is that tree? And there's a tree. Mm -hmm. That tree is petrified in a vertical position. So it's almost like rock. Yes. So how is it different from the rock next to it? Well, what I'm saying is this tree was alive when it was buried. Mm -hmm. So that tree didn't stand up for millions upon millions of years, did it? Is there something wrong with this picture? The you guys see what I'm saying? Disintegrated. Mm -hmm. Or, hey, did you guys know that, anyone heard the story of the Great Flood? That happened. You mean Noah? Yeah. No, did you guys know that that story existed in every single culture on the planet, from Native Americans to Aborigines to everywhere? And guess what? Same time frame, about 4,000 years ago. Who here believes Julius Caesar existed? Why do we believe Julius Caesar existed? Well, because we read, so there are written accounts of it. So we choose to believe in Julius Caesar. Are there written accounts of a great flood that happened 4,000 years ago? Sure, everybody's heard of Noah. In every single culture, why don't we believe it? <laughs> and it's <this> ark. <laughs> so, by the way, could this happen to millions of years, or could it happen in about literally 20 millions with a massive flood that happened? Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? There's assumptions here saying, oh, it takes millions upon millions of years. We'll get into it. This is another example. They can do core testing. What they do is in Greenland and Antarctica, supposedly Antarctica, who knows? They drill down, and they pull these tubes of ice out. And you guys see these rings over the ice? What they call these are annual rings, just like a tree ring, right? Kind of like that. What they do is like, wow, it gets dark, it gets light. To them, that represents a year. One dark, one light is a year. Because in the summer months, the ice melts a little bit, and in the winter, they cool back up again. So it change, makes these little facts in there, right? So what they can do is they can drill down 10,000 feet and they can pull it out, and they can count the rings, and they can literally count tens of thousands of rings, hundreds of thousands of rings, and they'll say this is proof that the Earth is at least hundreds of thousands of years old. Make sense? They have different seasons there? Yeah, well, let's get into this. <laughs> the Lost Squadron. This was a really cool story. This was a World War II plane that got shot down, I believe it was in Greenland, and it got buried under ice. It took them years to find this thing. When they found it, it was under, I think it was 43 feet, or maybe it was a couple hundred feet of, of snow and ice. Okay? But this was in the 1940s, and they found this, I don't know, in the 1990s. We can look up the exact details. So 50 years in between. Right? Guess how many rings were between the top and the bottom of that? How many? Hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds. <laughs> so how does that happen? Because they're not annual rings. They represent when things get warm and then cold again. You can have that happen ten times in a day sometimes. So it's warming and cooling period. However, we assume that, oh, this represents a year, when it might represent a week. Does that make sense? That whole theory with ice. The bump, just like the rock layer. Hey, is this millions upon millions of years? Or, hey, could there be something like a catastrophe that caused a huge landslide mm -hmm. and caused all this to happen in three weeks? Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Or is it millions upon millions of years? You start to get into the absurdity of some of this stuff. Just to show you, right? This was on someone's windshield. See all the little bands there? More cool, more cool, more cool. It's like an iceberg or something. <laughs> How do we know the age of the Earth? Radioactive dating. This is obviously we don't. They invented in 1949. By the way, when were people being told that the Earth was billions of years old? 1949. Way before that, in the 1800s. 1942. 
<laughs> way before that. So did carbon dating prove the Earth is billions of years old? Is that the thing that came out and we we're like, wow, we know it's billions of years old? Or was it there after that? Um, See, we were already being taught in our schools that Earth is billions of years old before carbon dating, what we consider the gold standard. Here's the problem with carbon dating. It has to be backed by the geologic column. Meaning this, they do a test, they do some carbon dating, and they compare it to the geologic column. What's the geologic column? All that fake fossil rock layer stuff. <laughs> yeah, all that fake <laughs> If it doesn't match, it, guess what they do with the, re the, the results? They throw them out. If it matches, they say, oh good, we got a good result. That's how carbon dating works. We'll talk about the science of it. So essentially, the way it works is this. In our atmosphere, right, I'll draw it on the globe just for you guys here. <laughs> it's 78% nitrogen. Okay? Sunlight comes in and actually rearranges some of those nitrogens. And what it ends up doing is knocking some things off and it turns it into this, this element called carbon 14. Now carbon is usually 12. Atomic weight of 12. So carbon 14 means this. It's very unstable. It doesn't like being like that. It wants to change really quick. Does that make sense? Yeah. By the way, carbon-14 is 0.000765% of our atmosphere. You guys follow me so far? So we have this stuff, carbon-14, that's really radioactive, wants to change very quickly, in very small amounts in our atmosphere. <coughs> Plants breathe in carbon dioxide for oxygen. So the, car the C14, 0.000765% of that plant is composed of carbon-14. Make sense? Okay. And then we come along and we eat the plants and we get it inside of us. So inside of all of us we have carbon-14. And the ratio is about the same as in our atmosphere. You guys follow me so far? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, let's say I die. If I die today, I still have this in me and it's decaying. It's called its half-life. Let's say I have 100 units of C14 inside of me in 5,700 years, I would have 500 units inside of my, my fossils. Does that make sense? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I have 100 units, let's say I have 100 units, I'll make it easy, of carbon-14 in my body the day I die. Mm. Right? Okay. In 5,700 years, when they looked me up, how much carbon-14 would I have in my cell? 50. 50. 50. 50. Did I say that? Did I say that? Yeah, I have 50 <laughs> units inside of me. Does that make sense? And then in another 5,700 years, how many units would I have inside? Like there you go. It keeps reducing in half and half and half. Okay? So what they end up doing, how they use this, is really simple. They measure the amount of C14 in the atmosphere, and they measure the amount in the animal. Okay? If it's half as much that was in the atmosphere, they know it's been dead for at least 5,700 years. So it's just comparison, okay? If you guys want to talk more specifics, we can later. Here's the deal, because it breaks in half, breaks in half, breaks in half, after about 50,000 years, which is about 10 half-lives, remember guys, this is only 0.000765%, it's this trace amount to begin with. It becomes so hard to measure the amount of C14 that it's almost unreliable. So anything over 50,000 years is really hard to tell how much C14 is inside of it. Okay? So it's really good between zero to 50,000 years, but here are some problems with it. Number one, you cannot account for high C14 levels in strata older than 50,000 years. So when they find stuff that's supposedly millions of years old, fossils that are millions of years old, there should be very little to no C14 inside of that. It's decayed out. Mm -hmm. But they have very high amounts of it. They have no mm -hmm. clue why. Okay. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Diamond, for example, supposedly formed, which is almost incorruptible, supposedly formed millions upon millions of years ago, when they see they do these tests on it, it's only thousands of years old. They have no clue as to why. And it's got a ton of C14 in it. There's an equilibrium problem too. You guys see that water barrel over there? Mm -hmm. If I have a barrel that I'm filling with water, and there's water coming out of it, there's a calculation I can do to find out how much water, if I'm putting water in at a fast rate and, wa and water's coming out, at one point, it's gonna reach its equil equilibrium, right? So the water coming out is going to match the water coming in. It's going to have its point right there. This is going to happen in our atmosphere with C14. Every year, about 21 pounds of C14 is made. 
So there's mu, right? We have some hidden nitrogen that's making more C14. And then we're decaying C14 as well. So at one point, the amount being created is actually going to match the amount coming out, and we're going to have stability of C14. But that's not what we see today. But, but by the way, when they do this calculation, just like if I do this calculation over here, they find that it takes 30,000, it's going to take the Earth about 30,000 years to reach equilibrium. So, if the Earth is billions of years old, should we have equilibrium? No. We, we should. We should. Yeah. Guess what? Today, C14 is being created way faster than C14. Yeah, we're not at equilibrium yet. So what does that tell you based on this problem? We're not 30,000. The Earth is not even 30,000 years old yet. Pretty weird, right? They write it off. <laughs> you can only figure out the age also through an assumption. Let me give you an analogy. If I take this candle right here, and I measure how long it is, and then I measure its rate of burning, how much it's going to burn down, can, it, can you tell me from those two data points when that candle was lit? <laughs> what do you need to know? How long, how long the candle was originally? How long the candle was to start, and also, what was its burn rate all the way through? Guess what we do with fossils? You can measure the amount of C14 present in it. You can measure its current rate of decay. Does that tell you how old that fossil is? Does it tell you how much C14 it started with? No. You have to assume that, based on what is in the atmosphere today, in a way, right? And you can't tell if it's always decayed at that same rate. There is other different type of atmosphere that might be decaying way quicker or way slower. Also, can you tell if it's been contaminated? Absolutely not. So, when you get into carbon dating, they took this woolly mammoth and they did some carbon dating on it, and one part of it dated 29,500 years old, the other part of it dated 44,000 years old. Okay? What's the difference? They did a live, a freshly killed seal, it was 1,300 years old, they did carbon dating on it. How does that happen? How unreliable it is. Obviously, the radiocarbon correct. ages in error. The troubles of the radiocarbon dating method are undeniably deep and serious. Despite 35 years of technological refinement and better understanding, the underlying assumptions have been strongly challenged. It should be no surprise then that fully half the dates are rejected. The wonder is that the remaining half came to be accepted. Guys, that means that when they do radioactive carbon dating, over half of the points they throw out. And we accept that as a proper way to age something. Does that sound like science to you? No. no. That's not like our healthcare system, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's 2% of the time it saves somebody. <laughs> okay, just some quick fun facts that may support again, that the planet is 6,000 years old. We have 7 billion people today, right? It actually supports this timeline of a flood and then 2,000 years, and we have this equilibrium growth. If it was 3 million years old, we would have a lot more people on the planet today. Did you guys know that there's ocean is gaining more and more salt every year? So the, the ocean started actually as fresh water. And what happens is rain hits the surface and salt goes into the ocean, and now it's about 3.6% salt today. When you trace it back through the equation, guess how long it would have taken to get to 3.6%? About 5,000 years. If it, was, if it was billions of years old, how salty was the ocean? Right? Oldest language, Tamil, about 5,000 years old. Anyone know what the oldest tree is? Methuselah, about 5,000 years old. You guys know what the oldest is? I was going to say it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Where does carbon date that tree? Where does Tamil come from? <laughs> I don't know. India. India. Southern India. <laughs> <laughs> Southern India, I think. Camel Nadi. Someone here. Chinese calendar. What year is that? 4,716. The Hebrew calendar is 5,770. Just interesting that all these things kind of relatively around 5,000 years, right? <laughs> this is from somebody who was in the Mossad agent in U.S. intelligence. The Earth is not a spinning, a spinning on a globe at 1,309 miles per hour, nor is the Earth 4.9 billion years old. Absurdities that you were taught, and which stem from the Masonic Royal Society in London. What's this guy talking about? Not to too weird, but... Oh. 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 Oh.
<laughs> Look at it. This is us. This is what controls us. This is our school, our military, our prisons, our government agencies, okay? Then you have the corporate. Who here thinks corporations run our government? Yeah. Okay. Did you guys know that most corporations are run by only a few corporations, right? Yeah. So you have the bigger corporations, then you go up, then you got your central banks running, right? Above that, you have your think tanks, you have the United Nations, you have the Bilderberg groups, if you guys heard that, Club of Rome. Above that, you have the Committee of 300, the world's richest, most powerful people. Can you know some examples of people who are in that? Washington. Pretty much every president. Morgan, Rockefeller, Bilderberg. No, they're up here. That's right. Rockefellers, Rothschilds, people like that. Wow. Yeah. So when you get down to it, guys, you have. Is Oprah, Oprah part of the 300 club? I, I don't know. I'm not a part of it, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm over here somewhere. Guys. I'm working my way up. <laughs> That's me, right? Fully yeah. <laughs> half a person. But I want you guys to realize, you know, just to throw this out there. Is that a cemetery on the bottom? <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> so guys, what's the real purpose of this stuff? Open mind. Open mind. Uh, yeah, serious. I don't want you guys to think I'm just this crazy, I am a crazy conspiracy theorist. <laughs> well, just like we were told dairy was good for us, and we were told meat was good for us. It's how big yeah. can you Go back to that triangle picture. Let's look no, at the food pyramid. Yeah, right? <laughs> guys, it's about thinking for yourself and trusting your own intuition. There's so much stuff that's deep inside of us that we don't even know about. You know, I hope you shake you up. That's the whole point. Shake you up a little bit, right? It's like, wow, the stuff that we think we know, do we really know? I don't know if I exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfect place to be. <laughs> yeah. Except for the adjustment. Believe everything I say about it. <laughs> There's very little science in all of it. It's all a fake system, guys. It's, it's something to hide behind, and this is what authority claims. It is. It's all a belief system. So whatever you choose to believe in is your choice. You know, what I really, you guys want to know what I really believe, if the earth's flat or not? I believe it depends on who you are. I really believe it's just like a computer simulation, in a way. It's just a hologram. So I might believe it's a globe one day, and then one day it's a like, boom. How can it change like that? Guys, imagine a dream. Can you change a dream? If you were in a dream, could your earth change from a globe to a flat planet? Yeah. 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 Life's a dream, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's my belief, but hey. Other things to think about, though. Vaccines. This is what, you know, when I first became a chiropractor, whoa. This caused a lot of stuff, right? But the science is out there on vaccines. Have they ever done a population study where they studied people vaccinated versus people unvaccinated and said, oh, this group is healthy in this group. No. It's, they're actually starting to do that. What are they finding? What's the healthier group? Absolutely. How about nutrition? Do we know anything about nutrition? No. I think we do. But again, we wouldn't go down that science hole versus what's theory versus what's real. Same with supplements. How about genetics? All this stuff I know, these are all genes. Can you guys imagine the, like, how much real science is in there versus how much is theory and theoretical and all this stuff? There's a movie that just came out called Three Identical Strangers. Right. It's about triplets that were split and adopted out without telling the families. And somebody was keeping track to see if it was nurture or nature. Right. And there were things that came up on both. Right. Right. Cool. So how about cancer, guys? How much of it? So we believe in because of what we're taught versus like what's real, what's fact. You know, when I tell someone, oh, you can get an adjustment and getting an eating clean, how many people believe that? Right? Versus people like, whoa, I know I need to go to the doctor. What does the science say about it, right? I'm not saying anything's good or bad. How about wars? Why are wars starting? Money. Ego. Do you guys know, if you guys want to see something cool, look in World War One. look in Berlin-Baghdad Railway. You might find the real reason for World War One. something that's never taught. When they first found oil in, in, the, in the early 1900s in Iraq, Germany, who was a superpower at the time, had no oil in their place. But meanwhile, England, the United States, we had oil, oil reserves. So guess what? They made a peaceful pact with Iraq created a railway called the Berlin-Baghdad Railway to connect the two so they could trade with each other. 
and English troops were sent. The first troops ever sent to World War I was England sending troops there, stopping that railroad from being built and attacking. Mm. World War I, try about oil. Makes more sense, doesn't it? Mm. As opposed to Archduke Ferdinand getting shot. <laughs> Start a war with this guy. We love this guy. Us wanting to kill each other over this stuff. How much of it is this in this triangle doing all this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Your tactics to the Okay. <laughs> you have the power in the present moment to change living beliefs and consciously plant the seeds for your future as you choose it. As you change your mind, you change your experience. Just be open and keep that open mind and realize that when someone's telling you it's science, it's not. It's a belief system. So choose what you want to believe. Okay? And create your reality. And the earth is flat, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love you. Any questions? Comments? Yeah, Bianca. Do you want to share about the um, airplanes that traveling? And like the flight, the, um, the, the path, the flight path. Yeah, the flight path. Because that's a huge giveaway as to like. <laughs> I don't want to get into it because it's like a whole rabbit hole into it. Start all these conversations. <laughs> Guys, go <laughs> online and look this <laughs> stuff up. Well, look that up. That's amazing. Part two. What? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. what is it? Any other questions? Yeah. So, part yeah. two is whenever we like listen to travel to. One second, John. Go ahead, John. No, I said there should be instead of. Go ahead, John. They make it go here. The Earth being circular 2,700 years ago. Yeah. We, we just figured that out. Yeah. Um, if there's a lot more in the science, in fact, we have a new reference to any wisdom. Yeah. How we look at our world and our body and how it works, it says that there's always been design there. So if there's design, there has to be a design Earth. Absolutely. And if that designer is, is way above us, we can't fathom that. A lot of people want to make that infinite wisdom something that, well, how can you let this happen to do that? It's way beyond our comprehension. Yeah, and a reference to your, your uh, the, the Stratus. There, there was a movie out about a year and a half ago, uh, a year and a half ago called Genesis. And they looked at the Stratus and they said that in these Stratus, You've got fossils just, that are supposedly yeah. billions and billions of years ago on top of fossils that are thousands of years ago. Right. That happened when I went back to the, if there was a great flood, that would have mixed all those fossils up. And I don't know if you know this, they'll actually find it. They find a living fossil all the time. Now. Like, oh, we thought this was extinct for millions of years, and here it is, alive, floating around. And it happens all the time. You know, so it's like how true is that? By the way, that's a circle too. Right. Yeah. 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 And then the Bible talks about God set up a firm. Yeah. yeah. Two lights. It's pretty neat when you get into it. It's all how, how cool everyone is. But deep you can go to the round. Yeah. I just want to bring this on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.